In this video, we are going to look into complex signals, complex exponentials, and rotating phasors. Complex signals and complex exponentials. So, complex numbers are a natural solution to quadratic equations. So if you have a quadratic equa uh, equation, say alpha x square plus beta x plus gamma is equal to zero so you can find the solution uh, by writing x equal to minus beta plus minus beta square minus 4 alpha gamma over 2 alpha and from here we have complex numbers that we refer to as g uh, j in engineering or i in sciences that is if you have the solution in terms of uh, square root of minus one so that would be a complex number so in the same way we have complex signals and complex signals are basically an easy or convenient way in which we can understand different types of signals such as uh, underwater sonar and uh, ultrasound applications and so uh, so many other applications in signal processing so say we have a complex signal that is z which is equivalent to x plus jy now z is a complex number right and at the same time x and y are real they belong to real numbers so x is usually something that we refer to as in phase and y is something that we refer to as a quadrature phase so let us look into some of uh, fundamental properties for example if we take the conjugate of z so this would be x minus jy and similarly if we are taking the square of z so this would be z multiplied by z conjugate and that would be x plus jy times x minus jy and if you solve that you would get x square plus y square so this means that the square of a complex number is going to give us a real number and if you remove the square so you would have to do a square root over here so as I have mentioned that x and y are in phase and quadrature phase uh, respectively so we can draw a plot we can have a real part over here and then we can have an imaginary part and in this plot our z is over here this function is over here so this means that z is equal to x plus jy right and this is x and this is our y so this type of representation is called a rectangular representation however we can also have a polar representation in which the same z can be expressed as r e j theta this is polar form where r is the magnitude and theta is the phase specifically r is simply x square plus y square under root which is coming from here and theta is 10 inverse y by x so this means that a complex uh, signal can be represented in, ter in terms of an exponential so next we are going to look into three different cases when an exponential is purely uh, real when exponential is purely imaginary and finally uh, when the exponential has a form in which we have a real part as well as a complex part so in case one when uh, the exponential is purely real that is e raised to power 8 is such that a belongs to real number in this case we can have two possible scenarios the first scenario is that a could be greater than zero and if a is greater than zero this would mean that 
we would have this kind of function where the in intercept is at one because we have a one over here and then it is uh, increasing exponentially but we can also have a less than zero and in that case we would have this signal which is decaying so since it is either increasing or decreasing so this means that it is a non periodic signal so in the second case that is a purely complex exponential we have a signal uh, that is e raised to power a t where a is complex and specifically a is equal to j omega so this means that this is j omega t now if we plot this signal on the constellation diagram so again we have a real part and we have an imaginary part so this e j omega t so we can express this as e j theta where theta is equal to omega t so theta that is equal to omega t can have several cases in the first case that is when theta is equal to zero so this would mean that we have exponential e j zero and the magnitude coming from here is simply one right so this is our first exponential for this specific case just for understanding purpose say we have a light bulb which is emitting light from this direction and at the same time we have a projection area if this light is emitting from this direction this plot or this ej0 would be replicated over here note that uh, this is a function of omega t and therefore we can write theta over here also consider that we have another bulb on this side and that is again uh, emitting light downward in the downward direction and this is being projected over here and again the axis is against theta that is omega t initially when omega is equal to uh, omega t is equal to zero that is theta is equal to zero so we are over here and this projection can be observed at this point now we have two points one on the right side and the other one on the lower side and this is our original exponential now in the second case if we increase omega t that is theta to say 45 degree that is pi by 4 so we would reach somewhere over here so this is our e j pi by 4 the angle is simply pi by 4 so again this light is going to project this signal on towards here and similarly this light is going to project this signal over here right so next we can have a third case when theta is equal to simply pi by 2 so that is we are increasing the value of omega t and the phaser is spinning in this direction that is the anti-clockwise right so at pi by 2 we approach here this is our e j pi by 2 the first reflection is over here and the second reflection is straight down over here and we can continue on until 2 pi so we would have this phaser rotating at the same time the projection is this one and on the lower side the projection is so if we connect the dots after connecting we can observe that this is an odd function and in fact this is simply sine of theta against theta when theta is equal to zero the value is zero and when theta is equal to pi by two the value is one similarly this function is our cos theta and when theta was pi by two the value is minimum so over here we have 
pi by 2 so note that the magnitude this one as i mentioned earlier is simply 1 so this is plus 1 and if we go on this direction so this would be minus 1 similarly uh, the sine function is basically rating between plus j and minus j so this is plus j and this is minus j so this means that a complex exponential can be broken down into a cos function and a sine function and this gives us a very well known identity that is an Euler's identity which says that e j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta so we have a cos function plus j sine function we can further play around with this exponential say i can take a conjugate of this so this means that i would have e minus j theta and we would have cos theta minus j sin theta and next we can add this one with this one so we would have simply e j theta plus e minus j theta so this would cancel with this and we would have cos theta two times so what does this mean originally we have say this function that is our e j theta and e minus j theta is over here so if we add these two e j theta this function with this function so we are going to get only real part that is two times the cos function so we would have a reflection over here somewhere this would be our 2 cos theta so next for simplicity uh, we may remove this 2 and add it in the denominator and in a similar way rather than adding if we subtract so we would have another trigonometric identity that is sine theta which is e j theta minus e minus j theta over 2j and you can find different sort of combinations from the uh, main Euler's identity now let us look into energy and power of complex exponentials specifically energy that is e infinity is equal to the integration of uh, this exponential signal e j omega naught t from minus infinity to infinity right but we know that e j omega naught t is the absolute square of this one would is simply uh, cos square theta plus sine square theta right and that is simply 1 so if this is 1 right so this would mean that we are integrating a 1 from minus infinity to infinity so this would mean that e infinity is infinity however for p infinity if say this function is 1 so this integration would mean that we have t minus minus t that is 2t and this 2t would cancel with this 2t and eventually we would have p infinity equal to 1 so for a finite power we have an infinite energy so in the third case we have both real as well as complex part so uh, let us take the example where we have k e raised to power a t right where k and a both are complex numbers specifically k is equivalent to k e j theta that is this is the magnitude and theta is the phase of this complex number k similarly a is equal to r plus j omega you would have noted that i have written this in polar form and this in rectangular form this is due to a convenient way of explaining if we have both real as well as complex exponentials so this means that k e a t would be equivalent to the magnitude of k times e j theta times e r plus j omega t and we can expand the exponential uh, we would have e or t times exponential and this exponential would go over here you would have j 
omega t plus theta so from this we can say this is real and constant this is also real but dependent on time that is a function of time and this is complex and it is also a function of time but in our prior discussion we have mentioned that this is going to be a periodic function e raised to power rt would be either increasing decreasing or remaining constant and we would look into that and this is just scaling the amplitude so if we specifically look into this and say that if r is equal to 0 so if r is equal to 0 this would mean that e raised to power 0 t and this would become 1 and we would have a complex exponential which is just moving uh, in a periodic and sinusoid fashion next if we say that our r is less than 0 so this would mean that this value with respect to time would be decreasing so our sinusoid function would observe damping and if r is greater than 0 we would have exponentially growing sinusoid so specifically this part would determine the periodicity of complex exponential whether uh, the overall signal is periodic or not 